We got Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. He is a retired physician and founder of Health Watch USA, a national organization. Hey, good morning, Doc. Uh, good morning, Jack. I'm glad you're with us this morning. Bring us the latest on what's going on with uh, with this virus that we thought would last uh, a month, two years ago, two and a half years ago. Well, Jack, it's still out there, and the new variants that we're really concerned about are the BQ.1 and BQ.1.1. And these variants can avoid immunity, and they're increasing at a pretty rapid clip here in the United States. Currently, the number of isolates that have been analyzed, they are making up approximately 27%. And that's a large percentage, and week over week they're increasing, and we expect within the next one to two weeks, we'll start to see cases and hospitalizations start to uptick. In the Northeast, we're already seeing that in the New York City area. So it is best to get very concerned at this point and get vaccinated. And I'm not wanting to scare anybody, but our rates of vaccination and boosting are very low. And our best, really our best mode of defense against this virus is to obtain a booster, but also to wear masking and try to avoid indoor crowded settings, because I do think we're going to be in for another winter surge. All right. What about the flu? Are we seeing a big upturn in that, or is it too early for that? No, we're starting to see an uptick in the flu, and this may be because we've had two very mild flu seasons where the flu has kind of not infected a lot of people, so our immunity has kind of dropped. Some people say it may be just an effect of COVID-19 where that sometimes will stress out your immunity for a little while and that may cause you to be a little more susceptible. And of course, we still have people reluctant to get the flu vaccine. And that's, uh, that's not good either. You need to get both the flu vaccine and the COVID-19 booster and you can get those at the same time. And as you know, we do have a new bivalent booster out which hopefully will be better than our original booster, although there's some data right now that uh, says it's no better. But nevertheless, the original booster gave a broad band of types of antibodies that it produced and gives you coverage and will help you to avoid hospitalizations and death from COVID-19. COVID is still out there. And of course, you don't want to get long COVID either. And that's another huge problem that we're having to deal with. Uh, this new uh, respiratory ailment, this virus that is affecting a lot of kids, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's RSV. It's really not new. It's extremely common. Most of the kids will get it when they're very young. We've had two years where we did not have very many RSV infections. Now that people are out and about, this virus is being spread and there was some, I guess, catch up that had to be done. And all of a sudden we have a large number of children that are in the hospitals with RSV. And so this can be quite serious, and that's something parents need to really be on the lookout for. If their child starts to get infected or become lethargic, they become concerned about the way the child is acting, they certainly do need to call their physician and consult with them on what to do. So this is a uh, significant problem. So we really have three viruses, RSV, COVID, and the flu, which are currently circulating. And that's three good reasons why people may still want to consider wearing a mask. And of course, we recommend the N95 masks or KN95 masks for people to use, especially if you're going into a crowded indoor setting. And of course, there are vaccines for COVID, as we talked about, and the flu, but there is no vaccine for RSV, right? That's correct. I do believe they're working on one. But the vaccines take a long time to develop. They're kind of tricky. I mean, a lot of people, I think, have read the reports on the new COVID booster, which some are saying it's no better than the original booster. And that's possible. But the original booster, as I said, still should give you pretty good protection against this surge. If you look at the CDC data and compare those who have had two boosters versus those who are unvaccinated, there, there's like a 90% difference in deaths and fatalities. So it's something that people really do need to go out and get. And unfortunately, the rates of getting boosters in the United States is very low compared to the rest of the world. 
And in Kentucky, we're in one of the lowest categories in the United States. It's, it's really kind of frustrating why when we have the tools to really mitigate this pandemic, we're not utilizing them. And that, I think, is the overall message. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Always good to have you on with us. Thanks. Thank you, Jack.